Almost Skateboards is one of the biggest skateboard brands out there. Founded by Rodney Mullen and Daewon Song, the company has been going strong ever since 2003. And of course, after 18 years, a lot of skaters have come and gone from the team, but their impacts on skateboarding culture have been tremendous. In my opinion, Almost Skateboards has always been a powerhouse of a skateboard team. Amazing skateboarders like Ryan Sheckler, Tori Pudwill, Chris Hanslam, and Greg Lutzka have all been on the team at one point or another. I mean, of course, when you have two legends at the helm of the company, you can only expect great things. So today we're going to dive into some of the lesser known facts about Almost Skateboards. Before we start though, please give this video a like and click subscribe if you haven't already. It would mean the world to me. Alright, without further ado, let's learn some obscure Almost Skateboard facts. In 2002, Mark Johnson and Rodney Mullen were running Enjoy Skateboards. However, Mark Johnson had decided to leave Enjoy after burning himself out on the work he was putting into the company. Rodney Mullen felt weird to be on the Enjoy team without Mark Johnson by his side, so he decided it was time to depart Enjoy as well. Rodney Mullen decided to give his old friend Daewon Song a call and pitched him the idea of starting something together. In Rodney Mullen's autobiography, he said he wanted to work on something with Daewon Song all the way back to the days when Rodney skated with Plan B, which was like the early 90s. Rodney Mullen said, quote, I wanted so badly to do something with Daewon. He was my first call. Oh man, I have some bad news, but I've got some other news. I got this idea. You want to start something together? Start something new? And I could hear the excitement in Daewon's voice, so that's why I started it. I'd been wanting to do it for so long, but opportunity never really came up. Until then. And that was it. Day One Song hopped off Artifact Skateboards to start up Almost Skateboards, and they put together the first Almost Skate team, which included Cooper Wilt, Chris Hanslam, Ryan Sheckler, and Greg Lutzka. And like I said, it was a true powerhouse of a skate team. I mean, any one of these people can throw down a major part, but then also throw in Day One Song and Ronnie Mullen. They're unstoppable at this time. Okay, so where did the name of the company even come from? Well, according to Day One Song, the name Almost Skateboards was suggested by himself because at the time, the 2000 film Almost Famous was one of Song's favorite movies. However, that was only part of the reason. Song also stated that he liked Almost because of how often you say the word Almost as a skateboarder. I tried so many tricks in other skate projects in the past where I was like, ah, oh, that almost worked or oh, that almost went down. With both those ideas in mind, Song and Mullen chose Almost Skateboards as the name of their newly founded company. One of Almost's most popular skate videos is Cheesing Crackers. It's a mini pipe skate video starring Daewon Song and Chris Hanslam. In this video, there are tons of obscure objects that Hanslam and Song skate. It's so entertaining to see what these two come up with, and there are some truly creative items that they skate. According to Hanslam, he would build these obstacles out of things found around the warehouse where the mini pipe was located. Sometimes he would spend up to four hours building items to try on the mini pipe, only to later deem them as unskatable. If you've seen the video before, you're probably thinking the same question I have in mind, which is, what in the world wasn't skatable? These two shred everything you can think of. Anyway, no matter what was excluded, the video turned out to be a major success. It was so popular, Almost actually requested that Song and Hanslam should make a Cheesing Cracker sequel. However, Hanslam declined, saying what made the video so successful was that it was spontaneous and fun and the audience could see that. Trying to force a sequel would not work because it needed to feel unprompted. But I wouldn't dismiss a sequel just yet. Hanslam has said that if the opportunity presented itself in a natural way, he could definitely see a sequel happening. So I guess we just can't lose faith yet. In fact, Daywon Song did tease a sequel on Instagram back in 2019, so I wouldn't say it isn't completely out of their mind. However, my guess is that Daywon posted this more as like a reminiscence of the past, and I doubt there was actually a sequel in the works, but hey, I'd love to be wrong on that one. Speaking of cheese and crackers, the original name was supposed to be another delicious snack. The original name of this iconic mini pipe video was supposed to be peanut butter and jelly. I would assume they wanted to name it that because everyone was jelly of all the cool stuff they could do. Anyway, they even went as far as having the intro recorded with Giovanni Retta eating a PB&J sandwich and then accidentally spilling a glass of milk that would spell out the title of the video. However, right after the intro was filmed, a popular snowboard brand created the Peanut Butter and Rail Jam, which was a popular contest, so to avoid confusion, it was decided that the title should be changed to another snack name. And thus we got Cheese and Crackers. Now in my personal opinion, I think Cheese and Crackers is a way better name, but I'm curious, which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments down below. 
Rodney Mullen has often experimented with innovative deck constructions in order to create better ways to skate. One of Almost's most interesting skateboard construction designs is their Uberlite series of skateboard decks. These skateboard decks have a carbon fiber inner layer that constitutes a foam layer. Now, to put that in their own terms, it's some high tech sh but yeah, like what does that even mean? Well, it means that these skateboard decks are lighter, stronger, and even more rigid when you compare them to a standard skateboard deck. The technology of these uber light boards allows for a better pop, an easier spin, and it just is a longer lasting board. When these boards first came to market, they were limited to 500 units, however, these boards are now part of their usual lineup. Almost has also released a similar board construction called Impact and the Double Impact. Similar to the Uber Light constructions, these decks are built to last longer with better pop. However, they also have carbon fiber discs right where the trucks go to help prevent pressure cracks. These decks are typically a little pricier than an average skateboard deck, and the reviews I've seen have been typically pretty mixed. But I'm curious, have you ever used one of these Uber Light decks before? What did you think? Leave me a comment down below, I'd love to hear your opinion. Another one of Almost's most famous skate videos is Almost Round 3. Released in 2004, it was the debut video from Almost Skateboards and featured all the original team riders. Like a lot of skate videos, this one had a lot of fun and interesting bonus features on the DVD. One of the more interesting features included a 3D skate video. The DVD even came with some 3D glasses originally. I do own this video on DVD, however I bought it used, so unfortunately no 3D glasses came with it. But from what I can tell, it just seems like your standard cheap 3D used in the early 2000s. Like imagine Spy Kids 3D, but they're all skaters. Another cool feature about this DVD is that it actually came with a second DVD that was the exact same skate video, except it was labeled as a pirated copy. This was so you could distribute it amongst your friends because they already know you were probably going to do that. The only problem with this pirated copy is that it literally looks like a pirated copy in the way that it was recorded during a showing. So of course it's not the greatest quality, but hey, it's still a full video. The last feature I want to talk about is this easter egg where you can actually watch round 1 and round 2 from Day 1 vs Rodney. And it's kind of like a fun little cheat code. If you go to the chapter section, then click more, then go up once and then highlight the button that says almost round three, select it and you'll unlock rounds one and two to watch. How wild is that? You get the whole trilogy right there. Can you imagine if you bought Star Wars episode three and you could watch one and two if you did some funky thing in the chapter menu? That'd be nuts. Almost Skateboards has been a staple in the skateboard community for over 15 years. Even after all this time, they are still innovating and pushing the boundaries of skateboarding. Almost Skateboards is personally one of my favorite skateboard companies. I really love the brand and it just seems so fun. Like the board designs seem fun, the video parts are fun. It just reminds me of what skateboarding is all about. Anyway, what other skateboard companies would you like to see me dive deeper into? Let me know with a comment down below. Also, please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and click subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, have fun, good luck, and keep shredding the gnar.